Hi, here we have a 1991 BMW K75 RT. It has 82,000 miles on it, and it needs steering head bearings. You want to mess with that? Sean will show you just how notchy they are. Self centering steering. Not what you want on a motorcycle. This results in very twitchy handling, which is rather unsettling to most people. Some people grow accustomed to it. There's a bad detent right here. So you ask, how do these end up being notchy? Um, let's go with just difficult to steer to start. If it's very stiff, turning left to right, most likely your grease is so old it has congealed and just gotten hard. Um, in that case, you could be lucky and disassemble the steering head bearing, possibly thoroughly cleaning the bearings. You might be able to get away with just re-greasing them and, and reinstalling them. In this case, where they're notchy, you have to replace them. The reason they're notchy is because most likely these steering head bearings were never readjusted. Um, it was part of the 600 mile service and it's supposed to be checked at every major service thereafter by grabbing the fork legs with two hands and pulling forward and back as Sean's gonna do. And we see here there's actually a little bit of play. What happens is you're going down the road, every time you hit a bump, that front wheel's hammering back and forth. The steering head, steering stem is actually shifting. That pounds the bearing races, the bearings against the races, causing a detent, resulting in notchy, shitty ass steering. So we're gonna replace those today. Um, it's not a fun job, but for those of you just starting to work on BMWs, I'll take one of these over any non-fared bike that BMW ever made. The bikes with no fairing are fucking miserable because they have the headlight holder, instrument holder, everything else is attached to the steering stem, steering head. Uh, not, not a pleasant job. This one, not bad at all. So, Sit back, get yourself a beer, popcorn, whatever you want try to make this as comical as possible. Before we get going, I'll show you what it's, what it's like from here. Stuck right there. So, to move along, let's start with a nice tank cover, protect the paint. Or you can remove your fuel tank completely. A little easier for us doing it this way. Our next step is going to be removal of the front fender, front wheel. Going up. I am assuming you know how to do that already, so we won't waste much video time on wheel removal. If you haven't done it yet, I'll run it through quick. Remove this bolt. Remove these two bolts. Do not touch these. Remove these two. Slide the caliper back. Loosen these two pinch bolts. Remove these two bolts. Do not touch these. Definitely remove these. Pull the caliper back. Loosen these two pinch bolts. Don't fuck with that. That's your fork drain. Insert a screwdriver, pry bar, something of that nature in here. Pull the fucking front axle out. Wheel will drop down. Roll it out. Pay attention to your spacers. There is a very thin spacer on this side. The axle is the main spacer. This side has a rather large tube spacer. And out with that, the front fender comes off. There's a little trap door here on the back. You just peel it back. You'll see an Allen bolt. 
right here, five millimeter Allen, we'll remove that. That will lift the top cover. No, it doesn't. That just separates. That's gonna be a long through bolt on the K75. Um, so anyway, use an Allen wrench, take that bolt out. That will release the front fender and the back. Loosen this, you'll need a 10 millimeter wrench on the back side, five millimeter, five millimeter Allen out here. Loosen it a little bit, this will come right off. Don't break the little, little divot on the door there. Our front wheel has been removed. Our next step is going to be this plastic panel up here. You have a screw here, 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 and there. And that should free that panel. Now you'll notice you still would not be able to pull the steering head, steering stem out. We have to remove the radiator cover as well, which is a little bit of a pain in the ass, but screw there, screw here, one screw here. Once you have those screws removed, you don't really have to remove this panel from the bike. Um, you're going to pull it forward and down and then back just so that being careful of your radiator just so it sits there. Also notice how gunked up our radiator is. Scrungy. So that needs a good bath. Um, now we have a good shot in that head steering stem will clear. Our next step is going to be removal of the forks. We have one pinch bolt on the back here on each side and there's two up top. I'm sorry, 16 valve in my head. There's one on each on the top. Loosen those and then you can slide the tubes right out. We'll get that up. You will encounter sometimes as we are with this one that the bolt will not come out will not turn easily. Um, these bolt heads are very, very shallow, so do your best to bottom your socket out. We may very well, if you notice how it goes through here and into the front part. To be on the safe side, we're gonna heat this with a heat gun for a while and get that, try to get that towards uh, a couple hundred degrees. So this area here, directly at the end of that bolt, we will heat it because right now it's not going to turn. Um, you do sometimes run into the inevitable and the fucking bolt snaps. It's not pleasant. It's a lot of work to drill these things out in that case. But fortunately, in this case, we're doing the head bearings anyway. So if it does break, we're going to have the lower steering stem in our hand. If the bike was here for just fork seals and you were taking all this apart and it broke, You've just turned a four-hour job into a eight-hour job. Not pleasant. So Sean's going to heat that up for the next 10, 15 minutes or so, and uh, then we'll proceed. So we are at about 200 degrees at this point. We're going to make an attempt to get this fucker to move. So... Yeah, go for it. Drop the gun. Freeze spray that bolt. In an attempt to reduce the size of the bolt. Turn. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. Nope. No, it's, it's turning in the head. Plan B. Plan B is thus. We are going to disassemble the top part 
and remove the lower triple clamp steering stem and fork tubes all together that will give us a better shot at making one more attempt to extract the bolts again if somebody had put copper anti seeds in these fucking things they would have come right out easily but obviously the factory doesn't and hardly anybody else does either so that's why these bolts are seized so we're going to drop this whole assembly down and see if we can salvage it from there your first step here loosen the top pinch bolts you'll notice that these are normal deep allens like they should have fucking used on the bottom um, you have you need a five millimeter allen to loosen this or take this bolt out it's one on each side that holds the dash pad in place with your dash pad bolts removed you now have access to the steering stem nut so you're going to loosen this big nut twenty seven millimeter thirty millimeter So with the handlebars turned to their stops, you're going to use your, is it 30? Yes. 30 millimeter socket with a ratchet and loosen the lock nut. Oh, I'm sorry, 32. 32 millimeter socket. You take the lock nut off and now with these bolts loose, we should be able to walk the upper triple clamp off. So you see, we're moved up quite a bit. Now we're not home free yet. Now you have, see that big collar here? This is what actually adjusts the tension on the steering head bearings. BMW used to have this goofy tool, a pair of pliers with uh, little foamy rubber on them to reach in. You have to loosen all of this when you do a head bearing adjustment, but you had a tool to get in there and adjust them. Um, unless you're overly anal, you probably don't care about having little marks in these. They're knurled anyway. I generally use a chisel to catch the corner and tap it. It makes adjustment a fuck of a lot easier than the goofy pliers because the pliers that BMW had, you have no range of motion in here. You also have no way to adjust these head bearings properly with this all assembled. Um, so unless you want to take the entire fairing off the bike to use the BMW tool, I suggest you just deal with a marred up little knurled ring and enjoy riding instead of staring at it. This tank had some previous nicks and scratches in it, but we are covering this up so we can get a... This knurled ring doesn't seem to want to turn very good, so just in case we have to apply a little more force to it than normal. We want to protect the tank, so we put some tape on it. Frog tape is expensive, but it works good. And then we will cover it in less expensive regular masking tape. That's good, Sean. You can hit it with a white shit now. And once that's done, we'll try to break this free with the hammer and the chisel. If that doesn't work, we'll try something different. You could use a bungee cord, go around the fairing just to hold the handlebars and instruments and shit up out of your way. Get yourself a nice sharp chisel. There's a ding in it right there. Already. Yeah, there's a ding in it already, so. Yeah, here we 
we go. Nice. Okay. Maybe. No fucking way. Let me move that pot away a little more. Okay. Here we go. Hold the forks. Remember, this knurled nut is what is holding the front end on, so it's very fine thread and it's got a long ways to go. This is the sad part. These bearings are not in bad condition. They feel okay. But if you look, and I'll try to get some pictures, you can see the lines in the bearing race. And that's where they have an indentation. So this is phase two, plan B of removing the difficult bolt and nice it turned good uh oh where did it oh, break no. nope nope it's coming out yep yeah little bolts turning you can see it in here outstanding once Sean gets that out we'll show you how shallow the head is you know, there's fucking, there's nothing here. There's these cheap ass shallow bolts compared to... Just as an example. You can see the difference in the depth of the head between these two. And that also correlates with the depth that your socket is going to fit, or socket or Allen key will fit into. So, I don't like these. I usually replace them with standard Allen bolts. So at this point, we are going to remove the two legs. We have a front endless K bike sitting here. And we'll be back shortly once we get the forks out of this lower triple clamp we will get on the process of removing the bearings. So we're now ready to remove the bearing from the lower triple clamp. The BMW manual will tell you to press the steering stem down which moves the stem off the taper so that the bearing can come off. People find that kind of intimidating and most people don't have a press. So this is an alternate way to do it. You take a nice sharp chisel, you're gonna crack the bearing cage. Don't worry about fucking up the little cup on the bottom. Which is this, because you're gonna replace that anyway. Got it. <laughs> One shot in. Yeah. There you go. I just don't think it's broken. Nope. Yeah, but yeah, you got it. Now we have this magnet here to catch our rollers. Probably isn't going to catch all of them, but some of them, most of them, would be added. One more on the back. One more on the back. Right there. <laughs> it's 
not giving up. But anyway, our next step is going to be removal of the inner bearing race. You get two options for that. You can go at it with a like a Dremel tool and cut a slot in it and then crack it again with the chisel to split it in half. Um, you can heat it up and try to pry it off with two pry bars levering against the lower triple clamp. You can press the stem out. Or if time is money and you're running a shop, you do it the way we're going to do it. You want to clean as much grease off of this as possible to keep the stench down. We're going to heat this up to 260 degrees. Then we're going to freeze the stem with freeze spray. And then we'll get this slid right off. We are now at good. We got about 450 degrees. I'm gonna take your air hammer, go right underneath the little dust cup. And that's it. Air chisel is your friend. I don't use air tools very often. Now's a good time to wipe this up while it's hot, because then we're going to tank this to clean it, and then it's going to go in my freezer for half an hour, along with the bearing races. This, partic this bearing itself is the one item that is not going into the freezer because we're actually going to heat this. So don't grease this yet. We're going to end up heating this to expand it, freezing the stem to shrink it, and it's going to drop right on there, not forgetting our little dust seal first. But we're not there yet. I like to clean these up. They're not exposed. They're not. They're not exposed enough for people to clean them, so they do get kind of grungy. And it's still fucking hot. So that's it for now. That's gonna sit for a little while. I'm gonna run it through the parts washer and then uh, into the freezer.